Hello, I'm Odin, and today I'm going to continue with my current favorite project. I'm going to make the arms for my 1974 Mecha Godzilla cosplay. The first thing I'm going to need is the shape and size of the armhole on the chest. I clean up the lines and make them straight. May as well make the lines neat and ideal. I also need the size of my arm. It, it'll need to fit inside of the whole thing, of course. Right now I'm working on the upper arm, but I have most of what I need. And I make the paper pattern for the part that will attach the arm to the shoulder of the suit. And it's too snug of a fit. So I make a second one, and this time it's from cardstock. It's also too small and doesn't go high enough on my shoulder. It can be a little bit bigger. Not a lot, it can be a little bit bigger. I start a new one, marking the center, and I already have the angles of the points, so I can just copy them. I double check the center lines, they need to be off by 45 degrees for each point. My plan is to use just this one pattern for all the accordion style fabric joints. It needs to be equal because half the pieces are going to be flipped over when sewing, so the pattern needs to be symmetrical. One improvement I made this time was not just a circle for the center cutout, but a wider circle for the upper half. And it's also offset from the lower. It's sort of an upside down egg shape. I check the fit against the suit, and I may need to make the armhole in the suit larger. I think this is going to work. I might have made some modifications to the chest, but this is what I'm going to go with. This gives me my outside dimensions. I can't use this just to cut fabric. I need to add the sewing, what do you call that? There's a sewing edge. There's a, there's a term for that. There's an ease, whichever. I need to add the little bit that I need to add to the pattern so I have enough fabric to cut out so I can sew it. So when I fold it, I get this shape. This is the, where I need to put the stitches, not where I need to cut the fabric. That's the point. So I need to make another one of these that has that piece. This has to be the size I cut out and I have to stitch within this because that fits my arm. So let's cut a few of these out and see how well that sews together. I trace the pattern again and add one centimeter all the way around for my seam allowance. Ha <laughs> ha, I remembered the name. I bought three yards of marine grade silver vinyl, which is soft and heavy duty. I measure out the width of my pattern piece, about a foot and I cut out strips of my fabric. Trace the pattern. I didn't think I could just fold the fabric because it's pretty stiff, so I cut squares that would stack neatly. And then I can just cut five at once. The fabric is stiff enough that a razor knife is easy to use. This is why I wanted a symmetrical pattern. The parts will line up just fine. I don't need to keep track of different parts. It's just one piece that's repeated. I sew all the pairs of pieces together on the seam line. I have some colorful binder clips to hold the fabric together because I don't want to poke holes in the vinyl with sewing pins. Fight with the fabric and make it go right side out. And just notice how poofy it is. By adding a top stitch all the way around the seams, it flattens that poofiness and gets me the flat that I'm going to want. The clips hold the fabric and keeps the halves from slipping away from where I want them. I get to fight with two layers getting inverted now. I just need to set the inner seam. This is the single most difficult seam that I've done in years. And just getting the first seam started was really the most difficult. The top stitched seam is fighting me on the inside, pushing the fabric around and missing the foot. Nothing lays flat. When I start adding rings to the piece, it gets easier. There is more material to turn out and hold the shape. I also needed to hang the sewing machine off the table to let the rings spin freely. With six rings together, I believe I have enough to make the flexible piece for the shoulder joints. I'm very, very happy with this. Now I actually need to make the upper arm. <laughs> yeah, it fits. Yeah, there we are. Yeah. There's probably an easier way to do this, but I got that to work. <laughs> To make the upper arm in foam, I created a template based on a truncated cone pattern. I added folds to the pattern, and they're equally spaced apart because there are three flat sides to the arm. It's not just round. Then I traced the pattern onto some four millimeter HD foam. I made a left and a right side. Now before I cut it out, I used a high speed cutter bit and a router attachment on my rotary tool to carve a tight V groove into the foam. And I use a piece of wood as a guide for making the straight cuts. Now these cuts are about three millimeters deep. I'm not cutting all the way through the foam. Then I cut the curved lines and the two outer sides with my razor knife. 
and clean the fuzz out of the V-groove and apply contact cement to each groove and the two sides. When the contact cement dries and gets sticky, the grooves close up and the sides stick together. I get a cone shape that fits my arm and has three equal flat panels. To match the foam arms to the accordion vinyl piece, I need to add a band around the top. So I glue together three layers of 10 millimeter foam, making a 30 millimeter thick strip. And then I cut that on an angle on my bandsaw, just going corner to corner. I tilt the table back to flat and then cut them again, making a triangle dowel that has the clean factory edge along the long side. And the lines of the three layers are gonna be hidden where the glue's going to go. Using contact cement, I glue one strip around the curved side of the arm. I lucked out that the strip is just long enough to make it. Then I cut angles into the other half of the strip and fit them to the flat sides of the arm. This is much easier to say now than it was to cut them then. I needed to make an extra set of 30 millimeter strips to correct some of my bad cuts. I used my bandsaw to make the angled cuts and keep them consistent. Now there's a cup or a cuff part that fits over the elbow. I guess you could call it the counter. It's flat on the bottom and has a raised curve on the top. So I cut two of them from some 10 millimeter foam. I plan to glue these permanently to the upper arm. They don't need to be articulated. Yeah, I think it tilts a little bit. On the flat insides of the arm, the counter has flat plates, more 10 millimeter foam, but it'll fit over the angles of the panels next to it. I cut some triangle pieces from the leftover wedges that I had made earlier and glue them to the 10 millimeter foam. I also add a smaller strip of four millimeter foam. The little step that's left in there is where the upper arm is gonna glue into this piece. This will add a little bit to the length of the arm, which is good, because I'm starting to think it might be a little too short. I also cut a strip of four millimeter foam to fit inside the longer curved piece. And I had measured and marked exactly where I wanted these strips to go, so both elbows will sit the same. Got a center mark, a center mark. So those two want to go together like that and that. Just this glues on kind of like that. Is that fitting right? I think it is. This goes here. Yeah, that'll be all right. That'll totally work. Happy with the test fit, I glue the pieces onto the upper arms. To fill the gap between them, I cut down more of the leftover triangle bits. This one side is supposed to overhang the part that wraps around the elbow. And there's a small scallop panel that fits over the flat panels. So I use some paper to make a pattern and cut a pair from two millimeter foam. One more big detail is the raised panel that goes on the side. I cut mine from six millimeter foam and cut the top edge on an angle to fit that slope. That is it for the major parts of the upper arm. I'll get to the small details after the lower arms are made. I start by measuring my arm and working out the size everything needs to be. This is one of the few projects where I drew out what I wanted before I started, and I write down my measurements. Yeah, just like this one, but simpler, which is nice. The lower arm is simpler, it's nice. <laughs> I use a ruler that I made from four millimeter foam to get the size that I need for the cuff of the arm. And just like the upper arm, I made a template on the computer and added three flat panels. I cut V grooves again, I really like the way this works out. I made a guide to help with the distance from the bit. It's much easier to measure this way and faster to cut. I cut out all the parts, clean up the V grooves, and I start to glue the panel lines together. While I let the glue dry and get sticky, I mark the top one inch off of the elbow side of my pattern and cut it off. Now I have a pattern for the band that goes around there. The lower band fits a little higher up on the arm, so I mark the start on the cuff and at an inch higher, I mark the other end of that band. I cut two sets of each from four millimeter foam and I add a little bit to one side because these bands need to be a little longer to wrap all the way around the lower arm piece. The glue is ready to stick now, but before I do, I trace where the bands need to go using the paper patterns. Then I roll the arms up into shape. The pencil lines really help with glue placement and part placement. It almost feels like cheating, but that's almost it. I got to put rivets around the wrist and that's it for the lower arms. Compared to the upper arms, it feels like I'm cutting corners. <laughs> I measured and did some math. And 20 millimeter between each rivet is what I want. 
so I marked them out with a pencil. And then I used super glue to attach these tiny circles that are left over from Ben Eadie's foam chainmail kits. It's really nice because I have so many of them. I am kind of curious, at the very first con I go to, how many of these rivets are going to come off and I'm going to have to replace? <laughs> at least, uh, I've got plenty of them. Yeah, about like that. That seems about right. So I want them longer because they are. If you actually kind of look at the costume and the toys, the, the sleeves don't sit at a normal sleeve length. They're a little longer. I think because the guy is holding on to the, the actor in the costume in the movie is holding on to the uh, unarticulated, non-functional hands. And that's what I'll be making in the next video is a pair of unarticulated, non-functional hands because it's true to the costume. They're just in this permanent kind of a finger firing karate chop position. I start measuring where the rivets need to go on the elbows and around the arm plate. Then I can start super gluing on dots on the arm plate. And then there's two rows that go around each elbow. In the middle of the arm plate, Mega Godzilla has an MG logo. I measure out the space and draw it out on paper and make a pattern. Then I can cut a pair from some red what the foam. I can just use super glue to attach the logo to the arm. I'm not sure why one would want a monogrammed kaiju. Maybe it's just like a logo, like a sports car or something. The last detail for the arm is this bit on the inside of the elbow. It's two layers of six millimeter foam with a couple of discs glued to it. Okay, these aren't table legs. These are actually arms. And I can start plastic dipping now. Hooray, painting! I sprayed them each with a couple of coats of Plasti Dip, and while they were drying, I started to cut out and make the joint cover for the elbows. These are all new circles cut to fit my arm and just inside of the costume arm. I sew them together just like I did with the upper arm. But these are so much smaller, it's really hard to get the seams to be right. And the inner seam was impossible. I decided to glue them together just to get them done for this video. I start spraying the same silver acrylic spray that I've used previously over the black Plasti Dip parts. It took about four coats to cover everything with the silver acrylic paint, but I'm really happy with the coverage that I've got. And the only thing I really need to do now is paint the MG logo red. First thing I want to do is a couple of coats of white. Even though I'm painting over silver, I want to do a white flash to make the red as red as it can be. It takes two coats of paint to get a good solid red, and I finished painting Mechagodzilla's tattoo. And I'm going to need to add one more piece to the vinyl shoulders, something that I can glue to the foam arms. I roll the edge over onto itself and hem it so it's neat, and then this piece will be sewn onto the rest. I apply two coats of contact cement to the upper arms and one heavy coat on the fabric side of the vinyl. After the contact cement dries and gets sticky, I can attach the flexible shoulder piece to the upper arms. And it was at this point that I knew the elbow part that I made earlier was not going to work at all. Most of the materials I used for this project I picked up locally. I put a part list in the description. And you get to that point in the project where it's just kicking your butt and my butt's kicked. I, I'm not sure how to fix where I'm at. The problem I've got primarily is the bellows piece that I made for the elbow isn't giving me enough flexibility that it's actually gonna work. If I put all of them together, that might do it, but that adds an awful lot of bulk in the front that I don't need and I, it, it's, mm, I'm gonna make new ones. So that means I don't have elbows. Also, I don't have anybody here at the shop with me at the moment, and if I was to put this on, I don't think I could get it back off without an assistant. I'm not even sure I could get it on by, by myself because I don't see how I could get the head on once I have these arms put on, because this is gonna restrict my movement too much. So 
Next week's video is going to be hands, it's going to be elbows, it's going to be attaching the arms to the cosplay, and I'm going to get to wear it. And we're all going to get to see exactly how the upper body of a 1974 Mecha Godzilla is going to fit on this guy because this is how Odin makes. I really wanted to put this thing on. I did. I really did. Sorry I couldn't. And the other goofy thing is in order to make the lower arms work, here's here's a little behind the scenes thing. Yeah, they're they're taped on because uh, the elbows failed. So so for the final shots, I, I just taped them on. Yeah, there's there's your behind the scenes for this week. I want to thank Alex R, Detlef P, and all of my Patreon supporters. My Patreon support is the number one thing that makes this show possible. If you liked the video, don't forget to subscribe. Have an idea for something for me to make? Please leave a comment below. And if you make any of these projects, you can send me a picture.